Hey, what is going on guys? Expert Fusion here, and today we are going to be ranking every episode of The Walking Dead Season 5 from worst to best. So this season is interesting because a lot of people love it. It's usually a fan favorite season. Personally speaking, I think it's a little overrated. Just a tiny bit. I do think it's still a really great season, but I don't think it's nearly as good as people say. There's some really strong points, but also some points that I'm just like not interested in mainly the middle of the season i just really do not enjoy but let's get into ranking these episodes so starting off with the number 16th spot slab town episode four not only is this my least favorite episode of the season i think this might be my least favorite episode of the entire show like ever this episode was so pointless it was pointless point blank period so they introduced this hospital group which we didn't see Again, what well, we saw obviously again this couple episodes, but after episode eight, never saw him again. So the development they chose for this episode, 40 minutes of introducing this community. This community was not used past four more episodes after this point. So 40 minutes for just that, right? Just for a couple episode arc. And the characters in it, except for Noah, weren't used four episodes later, but Noah was killed off by the end of the season anyways. So a lot of this episode just feels pointless. We don't need to learn about this hospital group. I think the whole hospital arc in its own right was boring. I think it was a useless arc. It was literally just there to kill off Beth. They could have killed off Beth in a million different ways though. We didn't need this whole arc to do it. I think they could have done some sort of an arc with some sort of a group at a hospital. I was fine with the idea of it, but the execution I think was really, really poor, especially with some of the characters between this hospital arc, because none of them were really riveting at all. I do think the location was quite awesome to go back to Atlanta, of course. We had some really cool shots of the city, and just being in a city location was a nice change of pace from what we've seen in the past couple seasons. And I think that one character, the only one I was somewhat you know interested in seeing, which was the nicer one, obviously, the one who was like being nice to Beth. I think he was quite an interesting character, but the fact that they just throw him away, we never see what happens to him after episode eight, kind of makes this episode feel even more pointless. I think that one scene when Beth kills that rapey dude was satisfying, but that's really it. I mean, and then Noah gets away, and that's really the only plot that was progressed in that episode. These, the, the whole community really didn't need to see 40 minutes of in one single episode. And then coming in number 15 spot, I've got episode 6, which was titled Consumed. This episode was a Daryl and Carol solo episode. This season had a lot of bottle episodes, way too many in my opinion. I'm okay with bottle episodes in season 7 because the communities are so much bigger, therefore there's more characters, but the communities were really small in season 5, or the groups that were being bottled in due to singular episodes, they're much smaller groups. So you have like a whole episode of just two characters, plus Noah who comes later on. It gets really repetitive. I'm not a big fan of this episode. If you're a big fan of Daryl and Carol and, you know, that kind of bond between them, sure, maybe you'd love this episode. I love these two characters, but even with loving these characters, I still didn't care that much because there's not much that happened. All we needed to see in this episode was how the hell Carol got captured by the hospital group that Beth saw in episode 4, and we had to see who came back to the church at the end of episode 3. That was it. It was kind of like a prequel episode. It was showing us what happened. And we could have got to cut to that chase within 10 minutes. I didn't feel like we needed them to be surf around the city. You know, they had some nice moments between each other. But we've already had an established bond between the two. I didn't feel like it was progressed much in this episode. So... I really didn't like it. There's a couple illogical things like when the when the, the van came down, it was coming down this way and it just lands like that. Some illogical things that don't really make sense and were just not shot well. But then again, just like episode 16, it was a cool change of scenery. It was nice to be in the city. I did like that, but they could have done a lot more with this episode or it could have been kind of combined with another episode maybe. And I think it would have worked much better. Coming in the 14th spot, I've got Crossed, which was episode 7. This episode had a lot of stuff going on in it. I think that's a positive. It was coming after like a couple episodes of straight bottle episodes, so it was nice to have a non-bottle episode that actually focused on more groups. And I loved, the one scene I loved about this episode was when they were hunting down, or they were trying to capture some of the cops so they can go in slowly, do it, you know, easily. I like when they were all planning this whole thing of how to get Beth back. 
And then some of the cops get away, and then Rick has to chase him down. Daryl fights the one dude, and Rick's just standing there holding his awesome-ass suppressed pistol out of the dude's face. It was nice seeing Rick use different weapons other than his revolver. I really dig seeing that from Rick, and that was just a badass scene. But the rest of the episode just had a lot of uninteresting, uninteresting things, like the stuff going out at the hospital. Not entertaining. You had Gabriel being a dumbass, which at this point in the story, I did not give two shits about Gabriel, and they weren't really doing much to make me care. Obviously, his character was developed later on, but at this point, we were sitting here like, I do not care about this priest. There were some good uh, Gratum scenes. If you guys know Gratum, that's the... Was it Gratum? I don't remember what they called it, but the group with Glenn, Maggie, Tara, Abraham, all of them, they had some more scenes with them developing them, and that was fine. It was... Now, I wouldn't call it filler, it was developing these, these characters in this group, but I do feel like a lot of the relationships that were bonded between these different characters in this episode, they don't really last that long. The show, I hate when the show does this, just great relationships and they kind of just throw them away later seasons. It kind of undermines the development of these relationships in, in these certain episodes. So, Cross, I didn't love this episode. I didn't hate it really either, but I do think it's one of the lower episodes of the season, so that comes in at 14th. Coming in the number 13th spot, I've got episode 10, which was titled Them. A lot of people hate this episode. A lot of people claim this to be a bad episode. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's good either. It's a very survival-heavy episode, and I kind of like that. They're on the road. They're struggling. They don't have a safe place to be. They're not at the church. They're not at Alexandria. They're not at the prison. They are just on the road moving, and shit's just going wrong every turn. There's dogs attacking them. There's a storm. They're, they're lack of water. They're, like worrying about walkers and it's just all these things that are just getting in their way and they just got off of losing two important people from their group that were close to different members in the group so you had maggie sasha daryl completely just broken i love that scene in the barn where there's the storm happening and they're the first three ones to stop they're not giving up they're going to stop this door from opening because there's walkers outside and they have to stop it because the wind is pushing it open that scene was really nice, and then obviously Aaron is introduced in the end. I think this episode just overall was a well-developed episode, and we had the whole group together again, and they were all, you know, a lot of dialogue, of course, but it was pretty good dialogue, because it was, it was a depressing episode, I'll agree. If you don't like depressing episodes, you're probably not going to like this one, but, I don't know, sometimes depressing episodes can be kind of good in some ways, and I think this was an example of a good, depressing episode. Coming in at the number 12 spot, I've got episode 9, which was titled, What's Happening and What's Going On? So this was the episode where Tyrese, fortunately, dies. Now, I loved a lot of the imagery and some of the stylistic, like, editing style that they were doing. I really did like that. I liked how they had all the flashbacks with all the different characters. Like, you had the governor come back, you had Lizzie and Mika, Bob, that one Martin dude. It, that was a nice Beth as well. It was a really nice uh, way to let him send him, I guess, send him out, but... The problem I had with it was his death, long term, did not have much impact to the story at all. It impacted Sasha, and that's about it. That's really it. For his character, who was really important the past couple seasons, uh, he, his death just didn't have enough substance to it for me to really care all that much. It kind of just came out of nowhere, especially after we just had a really big death. It was like, we didn't even finish grieving that one, so we, I didn't even really grieve this one, because I was like, oh, another one bites it. I don't know, like, it wasn't, it wasn't, I don't think it was a good death, honestly. I, I was saying that since, you know, the episode first came out, I really did not enjoy uh, the time and place they chose to kill off Tyrese. I do think the way they did it, the execution wasn't that bad, because like I said, I loved a lot of the editing, some of the stylistic choices this episode had. But that's about it. Other than that, the episode was just them running around this place looking, finding out that there's no one at this little community that Noah was supposed to go to or no one's still alive there. They had some hints of the wolves and stuff like that. Had some nice music as well, but it's about it. It wasn't a special episode, but it wasn't, it wasn't bad either. I think the editing and the style that they had the episode go with was actually pretty cool. That's what makes it a little bit higher on the list. Coming to the number 11 spot, I've got episode 5, which was titled Self Help. So this was the episode where the Abraham Gratum group was heading to Washington to essentially cure the disease, apparently, because everyone was saying, oh, um, Eugene knows how to stop this. He knows what started it and he was a scientist, all this type of stuff. And essentially, the highlight of the episode, of course, was the ending when Eugene admits he's not a scientist. And I really loved, loved Abraham's character in this episode, especially his backstory. One of my favorite like backstories to a character ever, the fact that he beat these guys in this grocery store to save his wife and children and they were just so scared of him and then they die the next morning 
and then he just goes to kill himself because what else does he have to live for? They died being afraid of him. He, what was he gonna do? So he goes to kill himself and then Eugene's there. And so he only decided to stay alive because he found purpose in his life. He found purpose. He has to help Eugene to get him to Washington so he can cure the sickness. And of course, when he finds out that that was all a lie, he gets pissed and it's rightfully so. But then he goes a little too far, starts punching Eugene, and that scene was so well done. The rest of the episode, though, definitely brings it down a little bit because there wasn't too much substance to it. I did like some of the dialogue, especially between Tara and Eugene in a couple different scenes. He had some scenes with Glenn and Maggie, which is always nice. It's about it, really. The rest of the episode, to me, was just okay. He had a couple cool walk kills with the, with the hose, with the fire hose. So, interesting episode. Coming to the number 10 spot of episode 13, which was titled Forget. This episode was very slow, but it had a lot to it. Which sounds weird, how can it be slow, but also have a lot to it. It just didn't have much, like, excitement, I guess you can say. But the thing about the Alexandria arc in this, in this season is that even the Alexandria arc, which is really slow, not a lot of action happening, is still so damn good because of the dialogue, because of this completely new atmosphere the characters are put in, and because of these completely new characters that we're getting introduced to. I really dug the ending of the season, the last, like, what, six episodes or so? Like I said, I didn't love season five, I loved the beginning, didn't love the middle, but I loved the end. That's kind of how this season is for me, and episode 13 is kind of in between for me. I loved the scenes at the party. I don't know what it was, but seeing all these characters cleaned up and nice clothes and nice party was so cool to see for the first time. I was just like, this is awesome when I was first watching it. Seeing everyone just talking, having normal conversations, Rick falling in love with someone, you know, Glenn and Maggie talking, and then Noah being like, it doesn't fit in here, but he does. And then Sasha freaking out because she can't get over the fact that these people are worrying about the stupidest things when they should be worrying about how to survive against the walkers all great writing, all great dialogue, all great acting. But Sasha otherwise had a couple of scenes in this episode that I wasn't too crazy about. You'll you'll come to know in these rankings, I'm not a big fan of the character of Sasha. Nothing against the actress, it's more so I just find the character to be rather dull and uninteresting. But so some episodes that focus mainly on Sasha, I'm probably gonna end up lowering them a little bit just because of that. But this episode doesn't focus too much on her, but the scenes that do, I, I really didn't care too much for, to be completely honest. The stuff with Daryl and Aaron was pretty cool, how, you know, he was going to have spaghetti over at his house, and that's the sort of relationship that season five built up that really wasn't, wasn't it wasn't continued on that much, you know what I mean? And I feel like that's a bit of a problem in a lot of these episodes, they have a lot of relationships that are great built up, a lot of developments, and then they just never really talk to each other again after a certain season. So I don't know why they do that, but I guess it's time constraints. You can't force in dialogue between characters if it doesn't fit in that time period. I don't know, whatever. Coming into the number nine spot, I've got episode two, which was titled Strangers. So this was in the midst of the Hunter's arc. And it didn't really focus on the Hunters, even though it was in the middle of the arc until the ending of the episode, but everything else was still pretty great. You had the introduction of Father Gabriel, which to me is a pretty great character today, but I think we all can agree in season five, he was quite an obnoxious character, but I didn't really care because I knew they would develop him over time. He'd probably eventually become a badass. I always was keeping that in the back of my mind. Like, he'll probably be a badass eventually, but some scenes with him I didn't really care for, but it was nice to see the first episode with him to kind of introduce us to him, to get to see the church. And I, I this the group in this episode, to me, is the strongest point the group has ever been at. Like everyone that's in the group in this episode, right? I think this episode 10 is kind of similar except for minus Tyrese, but the group in this episode is my favorite cast of characters throughout, I'd say the entire show. Like I love some of the characters in the newer seasons. I love some characters in some of the older seasons, but I feel like season five, I do feel like regardless of what you feel about it, the cast was some of the strongest we've ever had in terms of the characters and obviously a lot of them aren't here anymore some of them are some of them aren't but I, I do really like the characters that were present in this particular episode and then you had that scene when they were in the church and they were just having a nice talk and Abraham was telling them all about Washington and then Rick's like yeah we should go and everyone's smiling having a good time and then the shit happens when Bob's leg is taken that scene was gruesome and like holy shit 
it was, it was a holy shit moment pretty much and uh, comic book readers kind of knew what was going on with the whole dale situation that happened in the comics and we were like oh he's probably been and of course he was in the next episode this episode did have that food bank run which i wasn't too crazy about the scenes at the food bank i mean it was, it was walker action but it was the type of walker action that's like not that entertaining you know what i mean you have some of those episodes here and there sometimes Coming in number eight spot, got episode eight. That's kind of funny. Um, this is this is the mid-season finale, right? Episode eight was titled Coda. I one of my least favorite mid-season finales for sure. I think Beth's death was really. I think honestly, I think it was handled well. I didn't like the whole hospital arc, but I did think that the death itself was had a lot of emotion behind it. It was shocking. It was gruesome, and it was like. And holy shit moment and i like holy shit moments but i do think in terms of just how it, the hospital arc ended itself it did feel a little anticlimactic like we had this whole arc just to kill off beth that's pretty much what it was for it didn't really do much for me to be honest but seeing maggie's reaction there though and that was obviously emotional because beth finished in season two so in terms of emotion it did a lot for me but i'm talking about like in terms of the story it didn't do much for me uh which is important to note and the rest of the episode had a lot of just dull moments. I did like the beginning with Rick knocking into Bob and then killing him pretty much. That was a pretty badass scene. And then you had the, the, you had a couple of interesting hospital arc scenes in this episode. Like they finally made the hospital arc a tiny bit more interesting, just a tiny bit. Like that scene when Dawn was like kind of being heroic in a way. Um, I do like how the deal went. I, I, I enjoy that it didn't end up guns a blazing you know, a shootout like too far gone type. Even though that would have been entertaining to see, I do think that would have been repetitive. And I'm glad to see we had a group that they actually made a, some sort of a deal with and they just left after that shit went down. Obviously Dawn was the only main problem and some of the other cops, which obviously were gone. But I like how the one cop was like, it was just about her, stand down, don't shoot. And then they left. I did really appreciate how they handled that. I do wish that maybe some of those characters from the hospital arc at least joined the group maybe, but like I said, what are you gonna do? This episode, just for mid-season finale especially, was kind of bland, but it is what it is, right? It is what it is. It was a fine episode otherwise, but I think it's like middle the middle line, you know, that's why it's number eight, because it's a middle tier episode in my opinion. Coming into number seven spot, I've got episode 12, which was titled Remember. This is the first Alexandria episode, and I freaking loved it, dude, honestly. This is another one of those episodes that doesn't have, like, any action really at all, to be honest, but it was so freaking good because of the dialogue because of the new like atmosphere they were all in. Just seeing these characters having to try to deal with a different type of world was so interesting. And then Deanna interviewing all of them. And then, you know, Glenn going out there with Aiden and realizing that these guys are kind of dumb and really weak. And a lot of these people are weak and a lot of people, other people finding that out. You know, Rick shaving that beard. I, I, would, I love that scene. I don't know. It's just, it's so cool to see some different atmospheres for the show. I really liked how it changed the pacing of the show. And I'm glad that they, they went down this route. Obviously, we assume they would have because of the comics, but I'm glad they did because seeing them rebuild civilization is just the most entertaining part of the show, in my opinion. Everyone says The Walking Dead is about survival. I don't agree with that. I, I think it's about rebuilding civilization. Um, survival is just the part of every fucking show, to be honest. Every show, everyone's trying to survive. That's literally life in general, but I think the main purpose starts here when they're trying to rebuild civilization they tried it in the prison they tried it at the farm but this is where it actually worked and i'm glad it did and i'm glad they're still there and of course they have you know established other communities as well but this community this episode is one of the most important episodes to the entire show because of the introduction to alexandria which is easily the most important location in the entire show at least in my opinion so I like this episode a lot. I really don't have any negatives about it. I really can't think of any negatives. It's just not as high as the next six because I think the next six are just a little bit better. Coming to number six spot, I've got episode 15, which was titled Try. I was really excited to see the Rick versus Pete storyline play out on screen because that was one of my favorite points in the comics. I don't know why, but I really liked it. And it definitely was what I was expecting to see and I thought it was pretty damn great. I loved that fight they had at the end of the episode and then Rick going crazy and just literally scaring the hell out of everyone. But what brings this episode down? 
Sasha. I know, I know. I, I For those of you who love Sasha, I'm sorry, but I, I just can't really get around her character at many different points in the story. And this episode had a whole bunch of scenes with Sasha and Michonne and Rosita went after her. I did not care for those scenes. I did not. I just did not give two flipping jimmies. I, I just didn't care. But the rest of the stuff with Rick and Pete and Rick just investigating and stuff like that to try to find out what the hell's going on with them. All great stuff. And they also had some stuff with Glenn and Nicholas after what happened in the previous episode. They were chatting things out and making, you know, Nicholas or... Glenn was telling Nicholas, you're not going out there again. You're not going on any runs. It's just me now. Awesome stuff. I, I, I really dug this episode. I think it definitely felt like there was not much to it other than what I just said. But still a fine episode. I do also love the rising tension of the wolves. They kept having the W's on Walker's foreheads. And, and then Daryl and, and Aaron found a Walker or like a dead girl or something outside. Uh, taped with like a tree or something. The W. It was really, you know, kind of setting up for the finale, which was going to, we assumed, have some wolves in it. And it did, but it wasn't, you know, exactly when the wolves came in their full force in the later episode. Coming to the number five spot, we're now in the top five. I consider these five episodes to be all pretty, pretty freaking great. Obviously, some of the higher ones much better, but number five spot is episode 15, which was titled The Distance. So... This was Aaron's first episode, well, second episode, but, you know, his main episode where we were finally learning about Alexandria, and of course we didn't get there till the next episode, but I didn't feel like it was a problem to have to wait a whole episode to go see Alexandria. I was completely fine with this episode being just, you know, Aaron, and I loved, loved, loved how they handled it, how they were really cautious about it because of Terminus, and that's why Terminus is such an important group, because of how cautious it made our group to going to a community like this so i freaking love that and then you know that one scene where they're taking them and they're taking aaron down the road and there's walkers all over it and they're like driving around and then they get stuck and then they have to get out and aaron is freaking out and everyone's freaking out they had really good walker action some of my favorite walker action this entire season comes from this episode when they get stuck on the road and it's dark out and you see the the red flare shot so it lights it up a little bit gives it that green or that red glow it's intense, it's action-packed, it's fun, and a lot of the beginning scenes, just some of the dialogue, you see Michonne talking to Rick, and she's like, we need to do this, because Michonne's just done with this shit, she just wants a safe place to call home, and Rick's like, yeah, I do too, but how can we trust them, man? I loved how they were having those conversations throughout the episode, it really felt good, you know? And then, the ending has that beautiful scene where Rick's hearing children laughing, hearing children right outside and he didn't hear that back at terminus he didn't but here he has he's hearing children laughing beautiful i love this episode um but there are some slower points in the beginning which i guess bring it down just a tiny bit coming to the number four spot of episode 14 which was titled spend this was of course the episode where noah died and frick that was gruesome as shit dude i remember when that happened i was just like shocked for a couple good seconds but that scene alone with the, what do you call those, I don't know what you call those, the spinning doors, right? When they were stuck in them, holy shit, that was intense. I loved how they put them in that situation, that's such a unique situation to be put in, because that's what I love in the show, because sometimes killing walkers can be repetitive, and but putting them in unique situations that make walkers a bigger threat like this is awesome, and then Nicholas causing Noah's death was well done, well, in terms of, you know, writing, obviously, but Dicky on... And, and Nick's part and then of course that death was like I said gruesome as hell um, Eugene had some pretty cool moments moments since the episode how he saved Tara pretty much and brought her to the van and then he saved basically saved Glenn and Nicholas um, at that when he brought the van over to play the music and seeing Aiden die as well was gruesome but yeah, I mean, no one really cared too much because no one liked this character that much to be honest but it was still a really gruesome death and really cool death this episode was very very gory and you had stuff with abraham as well and he was just leading the group and it was just really they were doing a lot of stuff in these couple episodes where they're trying to make our group seem more powerful than the alexandrians because deanna needs to see this but then the episode ends with aiden dying and then um gabriel comes to deanna and says yo um i don't trust these people you shouldn't trust them either so that just throws off deanna completely making the next two episodes make a lot more sense so this episode was so needed for everything it did 
Um, it also had Sam and, and Carol with some stuff with them, and, and I didn't really care about that. The only thing we really needed from that was Sam telling Carol that he wants a gun. That's the only portion, portion of their little thing that was necessary, in my opinion. The rest of it, I just didn't care for. I Man, I guess you kind of needed it. Just, it just, I didn't like it. You know what I mean? That's, that's what I'm saying. Coming number three spot, I've got episode three, actually, which was called Four Walls and a Roof. This episode was one of the like creepiest, just eerie episodes out there, especially the beginning. It just starts off with like Gareth standing behind a door of uh, walkers, just uh, banging against the window. It's really dark out, very dark episode, and it's got this eerie ass music, and I freaking love that shit. And then the Bob freak out when he tells him he's bit, tainted meat. We all know that scene's iconic as hell. And then the episode just starts piping up. We start getting, I, I really did not expect this to happen in this episode, but they died they all died all the hunters they you know they go to the church later on in the day rick and the gang come kill them all and i'm not really mad that they did to be honest i don't think this arc needed to be that long it's one of those simple arcs it's like oh their whole ideology is they just eat people like that's about it there's nothing really deep into it there's nothing that we really need to see to pass that but it it was still such a great arc in my opinion so some of the strongest like four episodes in a row i really dig it really dug it dug it is that even a word i don't freaking know i really enjoyed it and this episode was no no different than the other ones of course not the best of the arc you, you'll see which one's the best of the arc but still that scene to me was one of the best scenes of the season and this rest of the episode too had some nice dialogue with you know bob obviously his last episode so he was talking to the group he had some he had a decent death because he didn't just die gruesomely no he was just bit he lost a leg, of course, but he still was able to talk to everyone, say goodbye to Sasha, goodbye to Rick, goodbye to everyone else, which was really nice, and I thought he was a good character. He didn't really have much screen time, but I don't really think he needed it. The screen time he had was all he really needed, to be honest. He didn't really impact the story too much, other than impacting Sasha. Like a lot of characters impacted Sasha, but they killed her off anyways. Well, because she, she left, I believe she wanted to leave. I believe the actress didn't want to be on the show anymore because she was going to another show or something like that. I believe she was starring in some Star Trek show i don't know the story behind it but you know what i mean um and then the episode ends with obviously daryl coming back from where he was because in the previous episode he left to go find beth and then this episode kind of picks up after all that stuff happening and um, we're all confused we're like where the hell's carol and that's how the episode ends which i think was a pretty cool cliffhanger i was kind of down for it to be honest even though we don't really find out exactly what happened to carol until episode six even though episode four kind of gives hints of it they played without a chronological or storytelling which i was fine with but like i said previously we kind of i kind of explained why i wasn't a big fan of some of those episodes that were playing with those out of chronological story or timeline or whatever whatever it was but this episode was creepy gruesome loved it Coming at the number two spot, I've got episode 16, which was titled Conquer, the finale, of course. Morgan. Goddamn Morgan, man. Morgan was a great, great character in this episode. Finally coming back, man. Finally after, what, like, five seasons from when he was introduced, but he only came back for one episode in season three. We finally get some teasers and hints of him throughout the season, and boom, he's back full force in this episode starting off with one of the coolest scenes of the season where he whips out his stick and starts jedi swiping the wolves who were trying to take his stuff but he keeps him alive and we're like curious why is he keeping him alive maybe he's peaceful now i don't know we find more about that out in season six obviously but in this episode it just kind of introduced us to him and then he came back later to save daryl and aaron later on which was another really intense portion of the episode when daryl and aaron got trapped by the wolves kind of setting up the wolf storyline which also didn't last that long same as the hunters but it was still interesting to see it starting to unfold and that had some cool walker action with that scene as well but what i think was the best scene or the best like portion of the episode is obviously the last 20 minutes or so that was intense the way the music was building up you had so many things happening at once and i love when they do that you had glenn versus nicholas which was awesome you had Sasha versus Gabriel, which I didn't really care for, but still, intense. 
Then you had Rick fighting his walkers that got to Alexandria because Father Gabriel was too stupid to leave the gate open and then the walkers came in so he was fighting them. Then you have the meeting going on and then he comes there and then after all this when he's talking having a speech you start seeing beautiful stuff. Glenn's helping Nicholas get up, you know? Sasha, Maggie, and Gabriel are holding hands praying. You see Tara waking up. You see Carl holding Judith. It's all beautiful. And then Pete comes and just kills Reg. That was so well done. And then of course the end. Okay. Do it. One of the most iconic scenes in the whole show, in my opinion. I loved Conquer. I do think it might have been a bit tame for a finale. Like, compared to most other finales, they're usually a little bit more crazier, but I still freaking loved it, and I think it was one of the strongest episodes of the season. But not the strongest. So, number one, the best episode of the season. Obviously, you probably all knew this was coming. That's episode one, the premiere, No Sanctuary. It's pretty obvious. I think this episode, I'm going to be honest with you, is a teensy bit overrated. Just a teensy bit. I do think it's top 10 worthy, but I don't think it's like top 3 worthy. A lot of people put it like number 1 or 2, but I think it's like top 10, maybe 9 or 8, something like that. I do love this episode though. The opening was freaking gruesome. Lining everyone up and just slitting their throats. Awesome. There's the gore with that scene. Holy shit. Carol! being a badass, killing so many people in this episode. Rick with the AK-47. Just mowing those people down. The end of the episode reunion with Rick and Judith reuniting, Tyrese and Sasha, Rick Carroll reuniting with Daryl and Rick. All that was just great. The only thing I really didn't like about this episode, honestly, I think the Tyrese and Martin stuff was okay. I didn't really love it, but I thought it was okay. The one thing I can't get over about this episode, and I have to say it, and I, I know this is not that big of a deal, but I have to say it. Way too many coincidences in this episode. Just so many. It's like, it's, it's bothering almost because it's such like a nick of the time sort of a thing. And I know it's a TV show, right? The coincidences happen in TV shows all the time. But it was like too much this episode. It was too good. Everything was going the, the, our group's way way too easily. Way too easily. Everything went just as planned. Carol decided to shoot the, the, the gas tankers the correct time right before they were going to get Glenn. Perfectly, you know, they were in that position in the first place. And it's like, okay, that's a little coincidence. That's fine. But then he's about to go again. Another shot. And then poosh, and it blows up. First of all, perfect aim that she was able to even, you know, do the little um, stick of dynamite, not stick of dynamite, the firework thing, perfectly, you know, aim, hit the thing. It was just way too many coincidences that I don't love because it makes it feel a little less real. But again, it's a TV show. That's such a big nitpick. It doesn't affect this episode that much. Still freaking love this episode. Action packed, gory, them getting out of the terminus quicker than most people expected. And then Morgan at the end of the episode, the after credit scene. I mean, come on, great episode. Great, 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 great. So that is my ranking for season five episodes from worst to best. Let me know your ranking in the comment section below or give me your top five or whatever. Whatever you want to give me. Um, I'm, interested, I'm interested to see that. Of course, next week's going to be season six. And then we'll go on until we get to season, uh, season nine. And we're not going to do season ten because... Uh, we have to wait for the finale, obviously, but I don't even... Yeah, we'll wait for the finale, and then, and then we'll do the Season 10 ranking, of course, which the finale might not come till God knows when. It could come in freaking December, for all we know at this point. It really... I have no idea. I predicted it was going to come out in May, honestly, but I was completely wrong. Um, so we'll just wait and see. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.